When that competitive spirit turns to bad blood, then the stakes are raised. You are no longer just fighting for victory, but for something far more important, revenge, redemption, and honor. We are back. You are ready. This is Octagon Hype. So welcome, 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 welcome back to Octagon Hype. My name is Brian Lacey and in the corner as ever, the main man, Mr. Josh Goodchin. How are you, mate? Matt, all the better for seeing you. All the better for seeing you. That's the right thing to say, isn't it? Well, look, Josh, we've got more exciting stuff for you to enjoy, for our viewers to enjoy uh, on this episode. Jumping back to the last episode, though, I need to let people know we put out a little extra hype. A little extra, little baby hype came out midweek with Brad Pickett, the teeny tiny Brad Pickett, <laughs> the WEC, the UFC legend that is Brad Pickett. Uh, he got to commentate with me in Frankfurt. And from that, he gave us his thoughts and he said some amazing stuff about the show, about the atmosphere. Atmosphere, and even about him thinking about fighting again, Brad, which, which we've put the brakes on it. We're good. We've put the brakes on it. But that says what the sort of the atmosphere of an octagon does to you, right, Josh? Absolutely. I mean, imagine that high praise from a UFC veteran, like a legend of British MMA to think, Let's lay, let's lay some gloves back up. That's pretty wild. That's pretty wild indeed. Then we went from wild uh, to romantic with the uh, the beautiful proposal, the bloody proposal of Stefan Putz. Uh, and again, we congratulate him and his fiance. What a wonderful moment that was. But Josh, I'm going to change the mood this week because this week we're going to not talk about love. We're going to talk about beef. And I'm not talking about my favourite type of cut of beef, Josh. <laughs> we're talking about bad blood in fights because... For me, it's always one of those things that adds that extra little bit of, you know, that seasoning on top of a fight, right? If there's animosity or if there's some build up online or there's back and forth, as a fan, it adds to it, right? Yeah, they say styles makes fights, but also the beef is up there. As a fan, that's something you can get behind because everyone, like, you know what it's like, everyone's got the favourite fighters. And if you if your favourite fighter is going against another favourite fighter, you want to back your boy to the hill, so like... Bring it on. Show us some beef. Let's get some beef on the table. Um, so I'm going to start with one that you experienced live, Josh. I want to talk to you about the uh, the Carlos Vermola, the Kinsel beef, because what I also want to get from you as I go through this, Josh, sometimes it's kind of fabricated. Sometimes it's people playing the game, right? When you saw Kinsel and Vermola, especially Vermola jumping over the cage, grabbing the microphone, then getting in, in the face of Kinsel, do you think that, that felt real, right? That felt like that's genuine built up animosity between yeah, the two. It was almost because it was so like unscripted and um, and just out there. Like in, you could feel it in the arena, like something had happened, like something had turned almost like it was an emergency. That It almost like when I was filming, I think, I don't think I caught it on the vlog because I'm thinking, what is actually, do I need to get out of here? That's what it felt like. <laughs> Somebody jumped into the cage and it just didn't feel right. You know, that's a lot of just get me out of there. Six, 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 six foot three or whatever you are. And the first thought was, how do I escape? How do I get out hey, of the They're building? all fighters. Like they're all some hard people in there. There, there are some hard, but I've got your back. Oh. I've got your back, Josh. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Um, so from that, that, I mean, that has definitely added to this fight, right? The promotion already. You look at how Octagon as a promotion can now sell this fight. And they've already done the start where they've had a face-to-face. -face. I think it was last week they had a face-to-face -face and it was... Fairly cordial, some things were said, but there was no like pushing or shoving. But for a promotion as well, to have that to hang the, the promotion of the fight on the event, that's great as well, right? Yeah, I'm sold. I know you are the chief fence sitter over there. <laughs> but having seen Kinsel perform in the way that he did and be around him on fight week, like I'm a fan of Kinsel. You know, I, I've not, like obviously I'm learning more and more about Octagon as we go along, but like as we go into this fight now, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards Team Kinsel, which is a terrifying thing to th th say considering I might bump into Vermola <laughs> in a couple of weeks. <laughs> With his lions and tigers and alligators. Um, but that's, like like you said, that's that was interesting as well in the arena because it swang. You saw before, you look at the Svanitsa, the big event where Vermola comes out on the throne and he's the king. He's the king of Prague. Yeah. From that, and we're only a few months separated from that, to jump in the cage with a Kinsel, He's now the bad guy, right? Absolutely. And he's embracing it. But that shows 
I don't know whether it's, you'd call it fickle, but that shows how easily with something like this, the one moment, the fans can swing as well. I think we're I think we're allowed to say that fans are fickle. I think like that is that's how I would describe it because I, I'm just the same. You know, we, we're their fans of mixed martial arts, and we want the best fighters to win. So it's a bit like when you support a football team that you you sort of follow them to the to the end, but you don't seem to like that with fighters and and mm. fight fans. Yeah. So it's interesting. It's an interesting turn. And and, and for fans, now we know we've got December the 30th. That's a hell of a long time for us to watch stuff happen, right? So for us looking at getting more invested in the fight every time. And we saw it uh, when they put they, they showed a, a, a Kinsel and Vermola clip on their YouTube channel. Within 20 hours, 100 plus thousand views. That, that says it. Um, I want to jump to some other fights, some other fighters that have come into the limelight um, who have got big fights coming up that have also kind of leaned on this angle of using beef or trying to stir something up to get their opportunity. So Mate Sanakidze, the Georgian fighter, will fight for the featherweight title against Jakub Tikota. Um, that goes down on December the 3rd. Now, Mate Sanakidze, I called his first pro fight, Josh. I oh, called yeah? his first pro fight. It was in Turkey, uh, 2017, I believe it was. Um, I've called two of his fights before he joined Octagon. Now, he's always been, and the nature of the country of Georgia, that area is very humble, you know, very low key. It's not very, you don't, you don't get many Conor McGregor style yeah. fighters now. He hasn't been on the mic, but he has been on social media. This was what the post he put up. He targeted straight away the champion, Ivan Buckinger. This is the first post he put up. Two fights, one <laughs> fight in, and uh, he's, he's already there. Look at the picture. So he's already trolling the champion, Ivan Buckinger, the, the, the champ champ at that point. Then he wins another fight. And this is the, the picture he puts up again, jumping again to have a little go at Ivan Buckinger. Then it looks like Buckinger is out. Now, this this time, he decides, I'm going to pick a fight with two people. He takes Jakob Tikota, <laughs> and he takes Lozan Kieta, and he does this to them. <laughs> this is... I'll fight the uh, the Blondie on uh, in December and then the Redhead in February or March, I, I think he says. April, he April, said April, April, April. Yeah. But look at what he's, <laughs> look at what he's done to these... Two animals. And I got to say, listen, they're pretty good looking for young ladies, aren't they? If you were to say this. How long have you been away from home? No, I've, spent, I've spent a lot of time traveling. But Lowe's on Kieta, call me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but again, Josh, that's a, a, using another angle to get a fight, be noticed. And now, because of that, and I'm not knocking his performances. He, his last fight against uh, David Moon in particular, the dominant fashion in which he beat the very dangerous David Moon has earned him that shot. But doing stuff like this on top, that gets you in the light as well. Uh, we've, uh, we've said it before. I mean, it, just as important as putting on the performance is when you get older the mic afterwards or how you leverage your social media. You know, like that is a modern fighter using modern... Modern warfare, modern that's how it should be warfare. used. That's a great thing, modern warfare. Um, to get your thoughts, so do you think, like we've, the Kinsel and Vermola, you felt that in, in, in the flesh. Just looking at that, do you think this is real beef or do you think this is somebody who's playing the game? I, I think nothing's wrong with either. No, nothing's I think it's real either. beef. I kind of like this angle. I'm like, I mean, we're jokey guys, aren't we? So yeah. like this really does resonate with us because <laughs> it's just funny. And ultimately he's going to have to step in the cage and let his hands do the talking. Yeah. But whilst you're doing that, like before you get to that point, damn right, use your social media and like have a laugh. Like, I love that. That's brilliant. That is brilliant. Let's jump uh, to another one now. So we've had him on the show. This is our bantamweight champion, Jonas Shark Magard. Now we'll play the little clip first of all. This is re was, this was reposted by the Octagon Deutschland, the Octagon Germany Instagram channel. And it's what happened following it that I want to talk to you about. So we'll play the clip first. I want to fight that guy. I want to fight Philip again. And he's been shown so good. And I want to fight him again because I want to finish him. And I want to also even just prove my wrestling against him. I want to, I want to finish him. I want to prove my wrestling against him. And I want to ha try to have a rematch. I've never tried to have a rematch before. Because even though you're fighting the same guy, you're not really fighting the same guy. You know what I mean? And what he's 100%. been showing. 100%. What he's been showing the last two fights, he's been... Ang angry he's been going forward and that's the guy i want to fight so josh there you go there's him just talking calling his shot yeah yep. calling his shot for what he wants next philip macek uh he, he wants that rematch okay um 
Let me just grab my phone because I have to read these out. So underneath that thread, underneath that that post that was reposted from an Octagon Hype interview earlier, this then kicked off, Josh. This then kicked off. So to start with, you got Jonas Magard saying, um, yeah, put me on a card in, in the Munich card in February versus Mikhail Diegashek. Now, Diego is from Munich. So this makes sense. So there's, again, Jonas calling his shots. Mikhail Diegashek comes back. Stop talking shit. <laughs> That would have done it. <laughs> that would have done it. I'll be in Prague, uh, 30th of the 12th. Talk shit in front of my face to see how hard you are. Um, like I told you, I don't talk much. Let's talk 30th of the 12th face to face. That's that fight sold, right? Absolutely. That's yeah. that. It's done. But they carry on. Joseph <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shat, what for another picture? Because they, they did get a picture together at one of the events. Uh, you know, I want to fight you, but Octagon didn't let me because your last performance was... And then the poo emoji, Josh. Whoa. Shots that's smack talking. Fired. If you're Shots. using the poo emoji, that's Shots game on. fired. Again, that could be that could be enough, right? What are we, what are we doing, writing a book here? Yeah? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the screenplay for the Shark Magard's uh, Diego Sheck movie that will be out in 2024. Um, Diego Sheck, you talk about you want to fight Magic. You want the rematch, rematch and bullshit. You just wanted to fight him. No one more. Now you talk and you want to fight me. We wanted to fight. You know exactly why this fight didn't happen. And it has nothing to do with me. <sighs> Let's stop talking on the internet. That's no business for me. Talk to me on the 30th of the 12th. But be prepared to fight before your fight if you talk shit to my face. <sighs> sold again, And mate. he's got the... He's got the little salute. Salute emoji. Let's go. Salute Let's go. Emoji. I'm sold. So, more. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Octagon knows you can't do you can't sell a show in the Czech Republic. What uh, what should the build up be as you want a split decision? Um, at least Maciek can finish his opponents, but I want to give you a chance to see if you can sell a show in Germany because the last time you fought there it was embarrassing. Just look at it. Then here we go. Bombs fired. Shots fired. Um, Diego Sheck, put your chance in your ass. We see you thirtieth of the. <laughs> Get that printed on a t-shirt. Put your chance in your ass. <laughs> that's, that's it. Put your chance in your ass. Oh my goodness. So it goes on. You can read it. You can jump to the post. But what I've learned from this, Josh, and just going through these last two styles of beef, just keep it short, right, guys? Just yeah. keep it short. Just short, impactful. I mean, yeah. that, that, that was a bit long-winded, wasn't it? It was, but it the, was still They both fun. wanted the last word. That was that, a problem. That's the they thing. both wanted the mic drop, and I don't think either of them got it. Yeah. Well, put your chance in your ass. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, yeah. that, that does it for me. <laughs> oh, dear. So there's that one, and we'll see how that plays out. So you've got to keep your eyes if you are with us on the, uh, in Prague for the I 30th. hope so, mate. That is one camera angle you need to get if those two cross paths we need to see how that goes down uh, then let's look at this one finally so this is Kieta and Ahmed Vilia so this was announced as a fight that was going to happen on um, December 30th this was going to be on the Kin Silver Moloch card Kieta dropping to 145 the champion at 155 dropping to 145 looked like it was all said and done and then Vilia put out this statement saying that um, Kieta is withdrawn from the fight because he feels that he's a risky opponent okay then you jump to Kieta's Twitter and you can see Kieta saying I'm not cutting 13 kilos for number nine ranked fighter oh. so there's something gone on behind the scenes here and whether it's bad blood or not I don't need you to answer that question Josh because right here right now Lozan Kieta is going to join us on the show so we can ask him directly I just want to talk to you a bit about what, what's been going on as far as plans for fights, because I know the, the Vilia fight was announced, um, yeah. and then I've seen that he says it's not on anymore, and you've yeah. put a tweet out saying that uh, you're not cutting that amount of weight for number nine. Yeah. Where, where do you stand? What's what's the deal? You know, first I didn't, I, I, uh, I know Ahmed Villa like a person, but I didn't know which position, position he was. Uh, I didn't know he had only one fight with Octagon. He's not even an, a title contender. He's 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 number nine. I you know nothing about that. No, I like like I asked I asked Andre for the fight. You no, know? like I was I was uh, I was home. I was I, I was training. I'm training, and they didn't give me a fight. You know, so I sent Andre. Andre, can you? I need a fight. He gave me a fight. I can go down to featherweight. Like like normally, I'm supposed to fight for the title for the featherweight. You know, and now I see. Two other guys are fighting for the title. I didn't make a problem about it. I said, no problem, just give me that somebody for the featherweight. But I didn't know they would give me like number nine. 
like I'm the featherweight, I'm the lightweight champ. I must cut like 13 kilo to go down to fight the number nine, you know. And this guy, and nobody's hyped for this fight. Like uh, I don't know what should I do. That is like, yeah. I say no. I'm not gonna do that. Like getting training, put all the hard time to fight the number nine guy. That fight not like if I if I beat this guy, everybody gonna say yeah. He just beat a uh, he just beat um, an easy opponent. He just yeah. He just beat uh, like everybody. Like the chance of this guy beating me was uh, was like the the. the the quartering was like nine if he beats me, you know? Like this fight is, is like it's not hyped, there is no hype inside. And and imagine, imagine if even if number nine you have a good record, I will still fight him because you have a good new record. You beat my you will you will you will bring my nine in the light. But this guy have nine four. So like I was like, why I'm doing this even? If I beat this guy, it will not change nothing for me. Uh, nobody will nobody will say yeah he beat a good guy everybody will say he beat he beat a bad guy you know, things like that I say damn yeah I cannot fight this guy so, so where, want... where where do we stand then are you gonna will you still fight on December 30th are you looking for a different opponent what what's the deal what's happening like if octagon sent me this week a good opponent with a good record and I know for sure this guy is a Tito Calibre like 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 number nine number nine uh, like number one is Ivan Bushinger, his injury. Number two is his um, uh, Bowrick, also injury. Yeah. Uh, number two and uh, number three and number five or four are fighting for the title. So give me at least Polish. He is the next in the line, you know. And he have in top, a topology record is like nine one and uh, octagon record uh, is like seven one, you know. So he have very good record. He is also a star at home, you know. I want that that's, that kind of stuff uh, fight. But you cannot bring me, uh, I'm like, like I'm a champ, and I must go down to fight the number nine. Like, I never see that in uh, any organization. I, I don't know what they were thinking doing like this. Or at least give me somebody. I will defend my title also. I didn't say I want to defend my title. I want to defend my title. I want to fight. Like, 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 like I'm sitting here. I'm hungry to fight, you know? <laughs> you know, like, in a long time, I do like uh, three fights in Octagon in six seven months of nine months now it's like almost half uh half years i didn't fight so i'm active guy at least give me somebody to 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 fight for my title to defend my title against or give me a good featherweight the powerless fight make makes sense to me as well i think that's good records good opponent um it's a big sacrifice and a big change in preparation i'm guessing for you to make the the featherweight right what what difference would that make and it has to be worth it for you i i get yeah yeah like like i see before like i work around 75 now i'm like 77 you know and before i was fighting at uh welterweight i was a was a veteran guy you know like crazy like, crazy yeah. Yeah, like I was fighting like 75 kilo. Um, uh, I was fighting guys in world welterweight, and so I didn't cut. Like all my pro fight was it was in welterweight. My first fight in lightweight was against Rishavi. It was actually an octagon, you know. Yeah. Like you guys, you like you guys can see, look like uh, lightweight guys. I'm not that big, so I can make easily, easily. Um, uh, I'm not gonna say easily, but I can make a uh, featherweight. With a good diet, like I'm never, I never do diet, you know. Like, like in five day, I drink uh, soda, things like that. I never, <laughs> yeah, I never do diet, so I can make feather, I can make feather it, I think, but it, it must be worth it, at least for the title. I don't know why they give even the title to these two guys. Like, I need to fight for the title, you know. But no problem, they can fight for the title, or I just wait and fight the winner of these two guys. They can give me the both, both of them the same night if they want. <laughs> what What do you think of the fight of the matchup between the two? Do you, Do you know much about them as their fighting styles? Who Who do you think's got the advantage in the Sane Kidze versus Takota fight? To tell you, I don't watch uh, them very well, you know, uh, because I watched the fight, but I, I didn't compare them to each other. But to tell you the truth, I think they are good, uh, Brian. Don't get me wrong. It's not me trust tracking. They are good, but there is level, you know. They are good, but there is level. And I think I can beat these two guys the same night. So I don't even care who's going to win. Like this uh, this other guy with 4-0. 5-0 um, um, to go yeah. to, yeah. 
Yeah, he is good, but like watching his fight, he needs a lot of experience. And uh, this Sunny Sanikin guy or something like that, I don't know even his name. So Matei Sanikin's there, yeah, yeah. He is not bad, but he is not somebody who can who can fight with uh, in pressure and things like that. So yeah, they are good. Don't get me wrong, but there is level. Um, does the champ champ status mean something to you? As far as is is it a goal you would like that the belts on both shoulders? Yeah, like now when I'm working, I'm working like this, you know. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah. And uh, be like being in um, in the uh, double champ in uh, the best organization in Europa would be loud for me. You know, you'll be like where I come from. Nobody do that here. Nobody even nobody even came closer. You know, like you'll be you'll be you'll be big. You'll be big. Not only for me, for my for people who support me, also for everybody around me. Like you, you even see when I'm fighting, it's a lot of people who. Who I, who I bring with, you know? So they do all the sacrifice. So uh, they do all the sacrifice for me. So I'm not fighting only for myself. So bring the two belts to them. It's going to be, it's going to be very, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to be very proud of me doing things like that. Um, Since you won the belt, I mean, you already had a huge army. Your fans are just the party fans. I remember I went to bed after the event and I could hear them singing. And I came down for breakfast and I could still hear them singing and they were playing football out, out the front. What's, what's, what's the response been like since you won the title? Ha, ha, have you felt a big difference? No, no, no. Like, uh, like I said, I'm an active guy. That belt is just there. I want another. I want to fight. Like that, only fighting keeps me happy, you know. So I have the belt. Okay, I'm like, yeah, I want another fight. Like I was, I was, I wanted to uh, defend the guy, uh, the belt against Legensky, and his manager. He said to me, uh, "They are not gonna fight me now." I think he said something. He said, he said something like that because I'm too good. They want Legensky to have like four more fights, and then they will challenge me. So I'm like, I'm there. I'm like, now who they gonna bring now? You know. So I'm like things like that. So for me, nothing changed. Right? I'm still, I'm hungry. I'm still hungry, hungry, hungry guy. It's not like I'm saying yeah, I have the belt now. Let me chillax. No, I'm training uh, all day. I'm hungry. I'm even more hungry uh, than before. Like uh, getting the belt uh, or something, but beating Ivan Bushinger, that gave that gave me more hungry. Like I'm like, yeah, I can I can fight the elite guy. I can beat the elite guy. So yeah, I'm I'm more hungry uh, about that. Um, you talk about your training. One thing that I've spotted on your social media is you've been training with Hassan Shaban, yeah, who yeah. is a beast, right? How did you two get linked up together, and, and how's that been training with him? Um, Hassan is a very good guy. He uh, he texted me. He wants to come and train with me. I said, why not, brother? You are welcome. Yeah, he come. He spent one week here. Hey, so much training. This guy, you went crazy. So you training like that, so brother, every day. He was like, yeah, brother. But I think he's coming next week back. back. Uh, he's in love with my, with uh, me and my friends. He's in love with my training uh, method. So yeah, I think he will come back next week. So we're, we are looking at potentially December 30th for, for a return. Now for Octagon fans, because yeah. people are kind of watching on the outside, you want to fight, right? You yeah. want to either go for a belt or defend your title. Yeah. So just let, let, yeah, I suppose just let Octagon fans know what that would mean to you to be able to do either of those on 30th of December. Like, it's like uh, fighting with me a lot of me, um, good for me because uh, it's a long time I didn't fight and it's not good for me. I'm an active guy. And also it's my birthday, you know? The fighting on 30th December is my birthday. Is your birthday? Yeah, it's my birthday also. Uh, Boom, we have to then. Yeah, my uh, my birthday is 30th December, fighting on uh, my birthday 30th December. And fighting uh, in Prague will be amazing because the last time I was a little bit sick, I was not in the vibe. So this time I want to do it correct, you know, putting a show there will be 
yeah, it will be very good. Honestly, I, I, I'm always excited to talk to you. I'm even more excited when I see you make that walk to the cage because what you've done so far is nothing short of phenomenal in nine fights. I hope we get to uh, to see you walk for the 10th time professionally on uh, December 30th. But from me to and from all the Octagon fans, uh, thank you very much for, for being Lowe's and Kieta. You are the man. You are the man. <laughs> I'll speak to you again soon. Take care, brother. So there we have Lozan Kieta. Josh, it looks like uh, he's still willing to fight December 30th, but he wants like an opponent that will mean something yeah. at 145 or he wants to defend his title at 155. It kind of it kind of hurts for Ahmed Vila that that fight has come out, but he, he kind of makes a bit of sense, right? You've got to respect it. You know, like it's his decision really, I guess. So I, I, I respect him. Yeah, and I, I hope we get him on the card. It's got to happen, right? It's got to happen that he fights December 30th. Um, now let's jump to uh, another fighter. Fighter's going to join us um, for an interview here on Octagon Hype. But somebody I want to jump back to and watch their last performance, their last victory, and then their call out, Josh. Because there's bad blood uh, which can cause a call out, which can cause you to try and make a fight happen. But equally as impressive is when there's those respectful call outs, right? When you see that it's two warriors, two martial artists that want to battle each other out of respect to test to test themselves. That's that's as good as a, as a sort of bad blood call out for me. Yeah, I completely agree. Like that's always a fun dynamic is when like the true martial art is the peaceful killers that's this that's more for me that's more terrifying that's, everyone can even talk. the way you said peaceful killers is terrifying, <laughs> Josh. it's true though isn't it the yeah. peaceful killers you know like yeah. let's let's just let the hands do the talking yeah cage door closes it's game on well let's um let's uh let you in on who it is alexander popek ironside is going to join us for an interview let's jump back to his victory in frankfurt this was octagon 36 just look at the devastating way in which he finished that just look at the celebration on the cage look at what that moment meant to him and then look at how he made the moment with the call out with martin zavada afterwards so look We've announced Munich is going to happen February 11th. This guy is Munich through and through. The, the head coach, the owner of Munich top team, Octagon light heavyweight prospect, Alexander Popek joins us now. So we are joined by the one, the only Alexander Popek, my friend. Thank you for the time. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me for the interview today. It's, it's exciting because we've just watched, relived Frankfurt, your fight there, your victory, uh, your celebration, the emotions that came with it. Sum it up for us. What, what, was, what was it like walking out in the Fest Hall, returning to Octagon and then getting a victory like that? Yeah, it was such a great event, such a great atmosphere. So many people. I think it was the biggest tournament MMA event in in Germany so far, and it was so amazing. When entering the arena, I got so many cheers, and um, yeah, the victory was uh, nice as well. And then the emotions came over, and also after the fight, so many people approached me for some photos or whatever. So great experience. Um. That's your return to Octagon as well, because some people didn't realize you fought Octagon 16 uh, a while ago. You've watched Octagon kind of grow, then you saw them come to, to Germany. Once you saw what they were doing uh, in Germany, was it a case of this is where I need to be? This is this is the home I need to be in right now? Yes, because I saw the, the growth of German MMA with Octagon. So now they are putting events here in Germany. The people, I think they recognize MMA even more than before. And we hadn't have uh, big shows like this before. So Octagon really put German MMA on the international map, I would say. So uh, now in Europe and also for German fighters, I think Octagon is very interesting and probably the best organization to, to be with. Um, let's, let's talk about your fight as well, because it was a hell of a way to re-announce yourself to the Octagon fans. Cause I, I've watched a lot of your fights back. I've seen most of them, I think. Um, and I've always been impressed by the, how well-rounded you are. Your kicking game is really good. Your cage grappling. Um, 
but your conditioning for this one, you looked physically phenomenal. Like, was that a big focus for this fight? Um, for me, everything is always a focus, like the physical, so the strange training, but also the skill development. So I never stop at one area. I always train everything. And then um, this fight, because it was a catch weight, 99 kilo, I probably, that's why I looked uh, bigger and stronger because I hadn't, <laughs> hadn't, hadn't got uh, down to 93 too much. Yeah. I tell you what it did give you, though, my friend, potentially the best flex on the top of the cage when you <laughs> celebrated. I was with Brad Pickett and we both looked and we went, wow, <laughs> <laughs> it's the only fight I think my wife will want to watch back again and again and again just for your flex <laughs> at the end there. Um, let's talk about the opponent a little bit as well, because it was a, a, a unique opponent. I'll say that he's he's like extremely hard hitter. I think he's 23 and seven in boxing. He's the Swedish champion for boxing, Montenegro champion for boxing, um, moved into MMA four and O until he fought you. Um, but an awkward opponent, right? A different style and a, a very different, even stage uh, cage presence, I suppose. Yeah, sure. Because you, you don't really know what to expect with this kind of experience, he, he was 4-0 in, in MMA, but as you said, he had like 30 or even more boxing fights, who knows, and he was um, multiple times champion in boxing, so I think we were expecting for a hard hitter, a good boxer, good footwork, but in his previous fights, he also showed that he had the skills in MMA, so I believe the fight before to before me, he beat one guy from Ulster's gym, Sweden. Um, right. A very strong grappling, grappling based heavyweight. So there he managed um, to get up well and finished him eventually in the third round. So he also has a very different warm up routine to most people as well. Because I don't know if you saw the video of him on the balcony having the cigarette before the fight. That's kind of crazy to think about, right? Yeah, it, it's absolutely crazy. But I knew it before because in his previous fights, the the announcer or, or the the reporter from the fight, he said, yeah, he's a smoker. But I, I, I watched his previous fights and he didn't seem to guess uh, too much, I believe, for, for that. Uh, so yeah. kind of weird <laughs> to do. <laughs> <laughs> very different, very different. Um, but let's talk now about the, the post-fight interview as well because... Um, Again, when I when I watch fights and, and see fighters have big victories like you, sometimes they, they don't make the most of the microphone either. But you had a, a very respectful call out for the German commentator, Martin Zavada, um, as well, which surprised, I think, everybody. I think everybody was kind of uh, surprised at that call out. Um, I know it was a fight that was signed previously. Is it one that you, you really, because of Martin Zavada's like status in German MMA, is it one that you really want to have to tick that box that you you fought a legend? Yeah, that's that's what I said in the call out as well. So I respectively called him out because he is kind of a legend in Germany. He had a, like I believe more than forty MMA fights or even more. I I don't really know. And he fought a lot, also international. And yeah, it would be great to fight him next and and get that, like you said, get that mark uh, on my profile. Yeah. And what about the Audi Dome? Is this somewhere you've fought before, or is this like an arena you've kind of hoped one day you would get to walk out in? So I never fought there before, and I believe there haven't been MMA shows put on yet because it's quite a good capacity not not the same like in frankfurt but i think like six six to eight thousand or something usually they have it for fc bayern basketball and now uh, this will be the biggest show here in munich um, from all time yeah so we have to have iron side on it right we have to have iron side on this card yeah <laughs> of course it has to happen. Listen, um, and what about the, the the other German fighters as well? Because we talked about Martin Zavada. The light heavyweight bracket in Germany is is good. You guys, you, you're built big. 
for a little Brit like me, when I look around Germany and I see all you huge guys, um, you've got <laughs> Stefan Putz, you've got uh, Haf, uh, Javier Zav Xavier Rafael. Um, what are your thoughts on, on the rest of the, 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 the German light heavyweight division? Oh, yeah, very strong. Um, Stefan Putz, he's now the number one. Currently in Germany, I'm number two, and he's also the number one in Europe. So very strong uh, fighter. Also, Hafe Xavier, I've trained with him. Great guy and good, solid fighter. So, and also many others, I believe, coming up. And we have a good light heavyweight division. And also on the card will be, I believe, um, Michael Daiga. But he's, of course, he's smaller. And yeah, good talent coming here from Germany and from Munich in general. I know uh, uh, Mikhail Dejagasek is is smaller, but I think he would fight anyone, right? He's one of those guys. Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so February eleventh is 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 Munich. Um, that's the start of what looks like the expansion into Germany. How excited are you for not just the fans, but in particular the fighters? Because Germany's been like a strange scene where there's there's great athletes like yourself, like your Stefan Putzes. Um, but there's not really been the shows to to showcase yourself on on home turf. How excited are you for the next 12 months, say, uh, 24 months with Octagon now in Germany, not just for the fans, but for the fighters and the growth that, that can happen? Yeah, very excited, for sure. I mean, in the past we had, or, or even now, we have some solid shows here in Germany, but it's missing the international, like, recognition and octagon is already a big international event so it's amazing for the fighters they can get on the show they can fight they can present themselves on a big stage with international audience and this opens even more ways for like sponsors and even better payment whatever like and you you get to compete on on one of the world biggest shows and it's right in front of your house door so this is amazing you don't have to always travel like around the whole world and i'm very excited for the future of octagon and also for the fighters in octagon and also within germany here yeah um so you've been very gracious by handing that out as far as all germany now let's talk about you what do you want over the next 12 months where as far as timelines, obviously Munich is February 11th. How many fights would you like to get in next year? And how many fights before you start knocking on that door for, for the strap for Octagon, the gold? So I like to sing always from one fight to the next. So first step will be Munich, February 11th. Um, already in my mind, Martin Savada, but we will see. Nothing confirmed yet. And then, um, yeah, it, it depends, like two, three, four, five, even four fights. It depends on the health status, on the injuries. But I'm very motivated. I'm in my prime right now. I'm healthy, I'm fit. So, and then, yeah, the, the, the octagon goal, goal is for sure a goal. And we will see. I'm, I think I'm not too far from it. And... But I want to always sing step by step and climb the ladder. Um, one last question about a fight that could happen that would involve a German fighter against the, the, the now champion of the light heavyweight division. The back and forth between the Terminators, Stefan Putz and Carlos Fomola. Just your take. If they were to fight tomorrow uh, after a full camp and step into the cage with everything on the line from the name to the purse to whatever else they throw into the uh, the battle as well as the belt who do you see winning winning that fight very interesting question hard to answer because i think they have kind of similar styles very grappling heavy cage grappling heavy very very hard to answer i don't I can't give a prediction. If I w would bet on, like, on the whole card, this fight, I wouldn't bet because <laughs> it's very, very hard to, to bet. Yeah. That's, well, that, that answer is as interesting as you picking one because, again, 
it's because it's such a, 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 a stylistically a similar bout, right? Yeah. I, I mean, they have the, the biggest difference is the, the height of the guys. And everything, like from the style, from the weight, maybe Stefan is a little bit heavier, I think. But yeah, the style is so similar. So it's very, very hard. They like both like to take the guys down from the cage and then work uh, from the top with some ground and pound and controls. So I think it will depend on who gets the takedown and then stays on top uh, on the other guy. So this will, um, I think, lead to the result of the fight. Yeah, Who can take um, it? Down? Uh, fascinating. And I really appreciate you giving your opinion on that. Um, it's also made it so exciting having you come into the light heavyweight division as well. The way in which you entered with your victory in Frankfurt, um, the celebration which made everybody kind of go this this is a guy to watch right now um having you back at octagon is an absolute pleasure my friend and i i really hope we have an announcement sometime soon about about munich about that dream of walking out into that audi dome a sold out audi dome uh, is upon us so thank you for the time today and uh, and thanks thanks for fighting in octagon mate we love it yeah thank you very much for the interview thanks for the kind words and yeah have a great day Thank you. No problem. You too, my friend. And I'll speak to you soon. Take care. So that was Alexander Ironside Popek. Now we talked a lot about February 11th, the first time Octagon will be in Munich. Let's have another look at the promo now. The electricity atmosphere. Ein absolutes Spektakel, was es so in Deutschland noch nie gegeben hat. The German mission of Octagon MMA continues. After selling out two events in Frankfurt and setting a record for MMA tournament attendance, Octagon is going to the next city. The metropolis of Bavaria, Munich, and into the local Audi Dome. Yeah! Even this time, we won't miss out on seeing the biggest stars of Octagon MMA. Elite fighters from Germany. And young talents from all over Europe. February 11th, Audi Dome, Munich. Tickets are on sale at ticketmaster.de. So there we have it, Josh. Munich. Munich! Not just Frankfurt in Germany, Munich and then beyond by the sounds of it. And Popek, when you look at his fighting style, you look at uh, the look he's got, you also look at the landscape, not just in the light heavyweight division in Octagon, but just in Germany. Like he said, Stefan Putz, Martin Zavada, Hafa Xavier. It's it's a great time to be an up and coming prospect in that light heavyweight division, particularly from Germany. Mate, sign me up to all those fights. Like I'm all in, get me to Munich, get me there <laughs> with my camera, a Stein. I want to see that violence up close Br bring and Bring you in your little yellow box <laughs> all the way over to there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's when we will keep our eye on. And as soon as we hear any announcements for the fights, uh, potentially the Zavada fight or any others that come pop X way, you guys will be the first to know. So uh, let's have a little look back at what happened and last week it was halloween josh halloween celebrated around the globe uh, in various forms and fashions uh, i want to take a look at some of the the people and the octagon fighters that that took part in some of the costumes they they decided to rock this halloween let's first of all start with the one and only stefan putz look at this there he is with his fiance uh, and max koga uh, a little theme tweedledee and tweedledum there I love it. um the alice in wonderland style thing. good effort right you man he needs to, his own show oh, stefan he needs it like we to follow him around with a camera well he's got his own youtube channel which does pretty well i'll oh, tell right, you that yeah. now so uh so that's good then we're going to jump to gabo gabo bororosh uh you look at him and his beautiful wife um they're, they're almost like a doctor death theme i don't know if that's do you know if that's from a film or anything or it's not that i'm aware of mate not that i'm aware okay, of okay well look good effort though from gabo then i want to jump to this one pavel naruta um i'm sure it is from a film, but it could equally be a drug dealer in any of the major cities in Scotland. Uh, that's, that's it looks a like a ticket scalp, doesn't it? 
Do you want to buy a ticket? Do you want to buy a ticket? A ticket to Octagon, Octagon, Octagon Tipping? <laughs> maybe, maybe it is. If you guys know what Pavel has come as there, then uh, then let us know. Or maybe that's not, even not in him, him in fancy chase. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's and, just his... And we're all sacked. Yeah, we're, <laughs> and this is over. Nice, nice knowing you. Um, and then now I'm going to give you some guesses before you, I reveal this one to you, Josh. Um, of course, Carlos Vermola. Carlos Vermola never misses the chance to get dressed up, never misses the chance for a photo opportunity. Can you guess... Who he went as, Josh? Hey. I'm going to let you out your misery. Let's see. Carlos from all of the Terminator went as <laughs> the Terminator. <laughs> you got to, aren't you? What I love about this is he's got he's gone and there he is with his beautiful wife, Layla. Um, but what I love about this is he's drawn the mask on. He's drawn. And he, he's got he, the mask. He owns, he owns it. Yeah, he yeah. owns like a really like well-made for, for Halloween. He's kind of, he's gone for the... God bless Carlos Fomola, mate, right? Carlos Fomola. Now, I was going to embarrass you and ask you to send me your Halloween costume, bests and worsts, but I'm not going to do that to you, oh, Josh. Thanks, I'm, going to put, I'm going to put myself out there because never ask somebody to do something you're not willing to do, people. That's, that's how it works. So I want to show you my, this year's fancy dress that I wore, Josh. Here you go. What film is that from? <laughs> it's... That's that's not from a film, Josh. That is a well-known person, personality. This year, Josh, I went as Matthias Kohut. <laughs> <laughs> Spitting image, right? Really. Spitting image. Oh, you even got the staple right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You've got to have a laugh. It's, it's still a Halloween party if you're on your own and crying, right, Josh? That's, <laughs> that still classes as, as, a, as a party, right? Hey, yeah, if, hey. if you say I, so. I, I never got an invite to your Halloween party or two. So, uh, oh, let's go from sad times to good times because even though it's been an episode full of beef and bad blood um, we've got to finish on a high because there's been some wonderful stuff happened this week as well uh, congratulations to Philip Matek he will be vying for the uh, the bantamweight title against Jonas Magard December 30th but he has gained something far bigger and um, yeah just a, a, a brilliant achievement for him and his family their new baby um, Victoria has been born so congratulations Congratulations to them. And Josh, it's one of those things where they've already kind of highlighted it. This could be the motivation he needs. He's kind of fallen at this, this hurdle of the big fight so often. I mean, he, he, his last performance against uh, uh, Jonas Magard, he, he, he just came up against an unstoppable force. He, he really didn't blame himself too much for that, but he knew how much he had to grow. The time before that against Thomas Dieck, he, he felt that he never showed up. He was so upset with that loss. So always in these big fights, he's kind of not quite reached that that uh, the, the level he believes he's at. This this moment, having a baby, could be the motivation that shifts that, right? I mean, it's so powerful. And, and I remember before I had a child, people tell you how life-changing it is. And you don't listen. You don't listen. And then when it happens and you realise how impactful it is to your life, how inspirational it is and how much it makes you want to achieve. Like you said, this could be everything that he's yeah. ever needed for yeah. just to push him forward. Beautifully said, Josh. Or he could not sleep for the next four weeks. <laughs> well, I don't want to say that, <laughs> but yeah. But that's a beautiful moment. Also, we want to send congratulations to Oliver, the host of the uh, the Czech studio, uh, Round Zero. He got engaged to his now fiance over in New York City. Absolutely beautiful, Josh. Right? At the top of the Rockefeller Center, I believe. Is it? Is it the Rockefeller? Is it that is? I don't. I, I, I don't know. But I believe it is. It's the Rockefeller Center in New York City. City you yeah. can see the Empire State Building. Yeah. It's similar to where I I got I proposed to my wife, Josh. So, but I, I didn't take her to a Rockefeller Center. There was a bar with an open top bit where you could see the um uh the, the empire state building and it was free to get in so uh that's where, yeah. that's, where that's where it happened that's, yeah i mean but if you just say if you don't go into detail you could be like i also got yeah, yeah, engaged yeah. in new york city didn't have to spend that sort of money oliver just saying just <laughs> saying so look we finished on a, a lovely note and once again thank you to everybody that tunes in shares subscribes to the channel you can do that by following our social media uh check out our youtube channel make sure you subscribe to that now news as far as the next episode goes usually we come at you every two weeks but because of booking schedules and movements and travel and all that sort of stuff you're gonna have to hold on for three weeks to the next episode but that will be a special episode where we will be previewing the octagon event in Austria by december 3rd uh, so just hang on stick to this replay this one a few times and we will see you back here in three weeks once again thanks 